I'm talking with Professor Chaim Shor of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev, and uh, we're discussing biblical designs in the Hebrew text. Here is Professor Dr. Chaim Shor, Department of Industrial Engineering and Management, talking about some of the things involving statistical analysis and cosmology, as referenced in his book, Coincidences in the Bible and in Biblical Hebrew. Discussion with Professor Shor will be dealing with areas of cosmology and case design in biblical Hebrew, that there's order, there is design. Everything in the biblical Hebrew, in the Torah, the prophets, the writings, every word, phrase, idea, there seems to be more than just randomness going on. There seems to be exact order. Things are being told to us that unfortunately are getting lost in translation between Hebrew and English. So let us consult the interview that I conducted with Professor Chaim Shor at the offices of the university that we could discuss with him some of these ideas that uh, he was sharing with me. I now share them with you. The world you did is composed of two syllables. Yad did. It's Yad plus Yad. Yad, your dalet, is hand. So when you have two hands together, shaking hands, you become a friend. How do you say a thing in Hebrew? So when you speak Hebrew, whether you want it or not, a certain way of thinking is imposed on you. Everything is the result of the word of God. So the var, a thing is the var. The root is to speak. What is the other word that you use in Hebrew instead of davar, a thing? You say chefetz. Chefetz is also something to chefetz ala shulchan. I put the thing on the table. Chefetz is a general word. What's the other meaning of chefetz? Will. Ani chefetz lalechet irotzeret. Chafetz means wish or will. So when you are speaking Hebrew, you connect things whether you want it or not. So when I said Davar, I immediately say it's out of the speaking word of God. When I say Chafetz, I say this is the fulfillment and the realization of the will of God, whether you want it or not. What I mean is that everything is the result of the God's speech and God will. The six days of creation are creation of the word of God. God talked. So everything in the world, because I don't think there is a word more general than thing. But thing comes from the bill to speak. When my, uh, uh, my uh, 
uh, interview on the Jerusalem Post was uh, published. Okay. I got a letter from a, an American gynecologist. Okay. And he gave me the latest research about the duration of the herion. Because there are two methods to measure the duration of a pregnancy. And uh, one uh, uh, gave a number, I think something like 200. 74 and another 266, depending whether it's the first pregnancy or, 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 or not the first. He gave me research, and according to the research, it's not a very old research. The real number is 271.5, and her is 271. Because of the Hebrew word, the word. Because of the Hebrew word. But the American gynecologist quoted an article that you can read it on, 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 on Google. That they did research what is the real duration of human pregnancy. And they calculated the average to be 271 and a half. And the herion come up to, is it 271? It is, I don't think. When I did a statistical analysis about the values of Hebrew words and how they are related to physical properties of the objects that the word represents, where the value of Hebrew words, you put them on the horizontal axis, you put the values of the major physical property of the objects that the world stands for, and you have a straight line. What does it mean? It means that values of Hebrew words represent physical properties of the physical world. There are at least four words in Hebrew that sum up values of letters comprising the word that results in a figure that contains repeated appearances of a single digit. I would like to take a look at four words, Aleph, Bechol, Sheleg, and Dam. That is the first letter of the Hebrew Aleph Beit, the word that we translate into English as firstborn, the word for snow, and the word for Dam, or blood. Talk to us about these four words, please. Let's start with the Dam. Dam, Dalet, 4, the value of the letter Dalet is 4, the value of uh, Mem, the second letter, is Mem, together they create the number 44, a repeat of one digit. What 4 has to do with blood? 4 varieties of the blood. You said, okay, it's a coincidence, it doesn't mean anything. So you take Shelley. And Sheleg is snow. And you combine the values of the letters in Sheleg. Sheleg is water. It counts to 3, 3, 3. The varieties of water is 3. Right? Ice, water, vapor. You go to a Bechor. How do you say Bechor in English? It's firstborn. Firstborn, right. Firstborn, according to Jewish tradition, get double of all his uh, brothers, brothers and sisters. This is a, a this was a told I think by the Gaon of Vilna. It's not it's not mine originally. That Bechor, you added Bet Kaf Resh, the three letters, root of the word Bechor, it comes up to two hundred twenty two. Two double it shows in the world. And of course, uh, Aluf, Aleph Lamed Pei, which represents uh, many times God is related to by the name Aluf. You combine the letters, it comes up to 111, the oneness of God that we talked about before. So, this gives you an example of what I meant, not a uh, cherry picking, because if it was one example, you said, okay, cherry picking. 
but you get four different examples. In each example, the repeated digit directly relates to a major property of the object that the world stands for. And you can't relate to it as something random. Because if it repeats so many times, probably it's not random. We know that family relationships are extremely important. We have fathers, sons, grandsons, great-grandsons that keeps going down line. I know you have some comments concerning this. Please address these for us. The world for father, son, grandson, and great-grandson is Av, Ben, Neched, Dorevi, Now. Each letter in a previous generation, the last letter in a previous generation, become the first letter in the next generation. So Av, the last letter is Bet. Ben, son, the first letter is Bet. Ben, the last letter is Nun. Neched, grandson, the first letter is Nun. Great-grandson, the Bible referred to them as fourth generation. There is no great-grandson in the Bible. So Dorevi, you have Neched, right? The last letter is Dalet. For the next generation, Dorevi, the first letter is Dalet. And I show it also with other cases, like in plants and, and other uh, cases, that the phenomena repeats itself again and again. If two objects are somehow connected, they share letters. So the structure of the biblical Hebrew words reflect. How about the generations of the structures of trees and plants? This is another one of those interesting ideas that appears so often in Biblical Hebrew. It's exactly the same uh, phenomena that we saw with the uh, son, a uh, father, son, grandson, and so on. So you have a uh, geza, it's a stem, right? It finishes with the letter ein in Hebrew. Enough branch start with Ein. So since the branch comes out of the Geza, of the stem, they share the same letter. The last letter here is the first letter there. You have enough. The, the last letter in enough is Pei. Pei is the first letter in Perach and Pri. Perach is flower, Pri is fruit. You don't know so you have two letters that are the same, the Pei and the Resh. They are the same in Perach and in Pri. So uh, sharing letters, again, reflect physical reality. Now we go into the physical world of nature, the route of water in nature, and how water comes from deep within the earth and finds its way out into rivers and streams. Talk to us about that, please. These four uh, words that you uh, you refer to uh, have the same relation to one another, like the father, the son, and the grandson, because the home are the underground water. Mayan is a fountain where the underground water come up. Nahar, river, is what comes out of the fountain. So you take these words, they are connected, and again, this, the last letter in Tehom, underground water, is the first letter in Mayan, fountain, or lake. The last letter in lake is the first letter in Nahar, river. The river that takes the water from the lake into the sea. So, last and first letters are now connecting objects that are connected in the physical world. 
It's amazing. It's, it's just, I mean, the more you dig into the structure of the Hebrew, the biblical Hebrew, you find structure that you, it's hard, it's hard to believe. It. Now there is more case design in Hebrew as we deal with the male species of humanity and that of the word in Hebrew for memory, remembrance. The word male in Hebrew means zahar, and the root of this word is to remember. Either it has to do with the Jewish circumcision, that the circumcision is supposed to be a reminder, or some other reasons, I don't know. But I find it very interesting that you take two completely different words and they are combined by a common root. How about flesh, meat, basar, and the word good tidings or good news? Okay, or besora. What's this all about in Hebrew? Very related example, you get a ot, which is both a letter and a signal. So does it mean that every creature who has flesh also has a certain tiding Maybe for the world? Could we call it an essence, perhaps? It's more the a tiding is to bring good news, right? Levasil. It means that every creature that have flesh, at the same time, his own existence, bringing some good news to the world. Never sell. You and I and every creature, we have some besora, some tiding to bring to the world. Okay. This is how I interpret, but uh, again, it's, it's just a guess. Not just in reverse, but the meaning of the word read in reverse is relevant to the word when it when you read it in the correct way. So Lavan appears in all Jewish uh, sources as a villain. He tried to cheat Yaakov. You read it in the Bible. You read Lavan backward. It's Naval, a villain. You take Moshe. Moses, you read backwards, Hashem. Hashem in Hebrew, God. Uh, Noah, you have it in Genesis, and here the Bible itself says it. The Noah, Matzachen, Bene Elohim. Noah, Nun, Chet, Matzachen, found favor with God. Chen is reading Noah in reverse. The bush, when Moses uh, Moses. Uh, I saw the, the bush that was burning and was not consumed. You read Hasne in reverse. It is Hanes, miracle. I mean, it's 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 really it's really amazing. Okay, how about Roa? Roa, it's, a, it's wickedness. Roa, you turn it around. It's O. It's a a a, a, a curtain, skin. Yes, you can read it also as Iver, Iver, blind. blind. And this sits very well with another word in Hebrew, which is sin or miss. You say in Hebrew, chet. Chet means also sin, and it also means missing the target. According to the biblical Hebrew, you are not a sinner, you can't sin. You just miss the target. You just have to, you divert it from the right way, you have to come back to the right way. How about the word Oshia? Oshia is riches. But what happens if you have a love for riches that is not in accordance with divine law? Then what do you have? So Oshia, again, you read it uh, in reverse. It, uh, it uh, read uh, Resha, evil. So riches you can have either in the right way, but you can do it also in the wrong way. I make a distinction in my book. 
between things that can be validated statistically by quantitative analysis and other things that I can prove statistically according to the scientific method. All those occasions where I can't prove statistically that they are not random, the probability of the cases happening by random, the probability is so low that they can't be random, I uh, take them as scientifically established. All the other cases, including the cases that you mentioned now, I have no, uh, uh, no choice but to relate to them as coincidences. And whether they are coincidences or not, it's a personal decision of every individual. Of course. It's okay. different matter when you have a statistical analysis. Because statistical analysis is a certain formality and you can argue whether the statistical analysis is correct or not. But once you agree that the methodology, the statistical analysis is scientifically correct, you can't retreat from it. In reverse, it means Tom. And Tom in Hebrew is both completeness and innocence. Wholeness, innocence, Wholeness, naivety. Right, right. Right. So, so how is that related? How is that opposite death? It's because right, yeah. it's it's like uh, the Hebrew, the biblical Hebrew, is conveying to you a message that with do, with that you completed something and you become whole. That's how I understand it. Now I know you have some ideas concerning coincidences in the Bible, such as the hidden unexpected information that appears in the Bible for randomness and cold. This is very important. Talk to us about randomness in this world versus cold. There are two words in Hebrew that until about a hundred years ago, everybody will tell you they are unrelated. One word is kor or kara, which means cold. Another word is kara, happened, or mikre, they are the same root, meaning randomness. What is the connection between cold and random, randomness? In everyday life, no connection. Yet. Until some years ago, there were two separate concepts of entropy. Entropy is a measure of lack of order. Okay? We say that the, since the Big Bang, entropy of the world grows all the time. So we have two concepts of entropy, one in uh, physics and one in information theory. The first concept of entropy is tightly connected to cold. The second concept of uh, entropy relates to information theory, and it is a measure of lack of information in a certain message. Those two concepts of entropy were disconnected until a few years ago when some scientific work was done and the two concepts are connected. We now know that entropy of information theory and entropy of thermodynamics they are the same entropy. It's one concept. But in Hebrew, it's the same word. Kara. When you say kara in Hebrew, you mean cold, noun, and you mean also kara. It happened. It happened randomly. Like in English, occur. Kara and occur is really the same word. Right? So kara in Hebrew means occur by randomness. Only through the concepts of, of uh, entropy. Uh, 
There's a concept of entropy uh, that was developed mostly by a very well-known uh, physicist uh, by the name of Boltzmann. And this is the concept of entropy in thermodynamics. It is tightly connected to coal. I don't want to go too much into it, yeah, yeah. but what you're saying uh, generally, that if there is transfer of heat, it always goes from the hotter object to the colder object. And the cooler the world becomes, the higher the entropy. And we are, exactly, and we are, the whole universe is cooling down and its entropy is going up. So this physical concept of entropy by Boltzmann relates to cold. Uh, and there was another concept of entropy that was conceived by Shannon, the father of information uh, theory. And there you have it with randomness. It has to do with randomness. So one concept conceived in two different disciplines that only recently were combined into a single concept of entropy. In Hebrew, it's the same word. Thank you for joining us today in Eretz Israel with Torah on location. I'm Avi Ben Mordechai. We've been talking with Professor Chaim Shor, the uh, professor uh, from the Department of Industrial Engineering and Management at the Faculty of Engineering Sciences, Ben Gurion University of the Negev, concerning uh, cosmology, creation, the biblical Hebrew, designs in biblical Hebrew, all dealing with so many different and interesting ideas as presented in much of his own research over the decades in statistical analysis and some of his own personal opinions based on what he believed to be or understood to be coincidences in the Bible. And uh, maybe they're not coincidences after all. Maybe there is great significance in everything that is being said from every Hebrew letter to a vowel, to a word, to a concept. We're going to look at all of these things and so much more. Thank you for joining us on today's program of Torah on Location. I'm Avi Ben Mordechai. Shalom. Oh